Good evening, I am Jack Fujii and welcome to the 12th session of Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the UH Hilo campus. Before I go on, uh, if I could have the Elmo, if uh, any of you have to get a hold of me, there are several ways that you can. One is by mail at uh, UH Hilo College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720-4091. You can get a hold of me by phone at 974 Seven three nine three. I'll I'll be at the nine seven four seven three nine three number, so please call me at that number. Or if you want to get a hold of me by fax, you can fax me at nine seven four seven six seven four. And for those of you on the uh, email, you can email me at jfujii at hawaii.edu. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening. So I hope you jot down your little questions and uh, ask them later on at approximately 8 p.m. We have another very interesting program for you uh, tonight. Tonight we're featuring Kuhio Grill and Encore. Uh, Encore is the new restaurant that uh, Kuhio Grill has. And uh, my guests this evening are Sam Araki. Uh, Sam is the owner. And also joining Sam, we have Evan Canberra. And I guess our camera's not gonna pan in over there, but there we go. Where, where are you, Sam? Okay, there's Sam and Evan Cambra and uh, Matt Miguel. Uh, Evan Cambra is the uh, assistant manager there and Matt Miguel is the catering manager. So we're going to do some uh, cooking tonight and I'm going to turn the class over to Sam and company. So Sam, why don't you take over the class? Thank you, Jack. And thanks for inviting us back. Uh, tonight we're representing two uh, separate restaurants. We normally just come and represent Kuhio Grill, but we just opened up a new one, uh, and it's called Encore by Kuhio Grill. And um, we're going to be featuring a couple of uh, items from, from the new restaurant and a couple of items from our Kuhio Grill restaurant. Uh, first of all, we're going to have Evan. Evan's going to be doing the poke. The ahi poke fried rice. Poke fried rice. First, we start off with the uh, ahi poke. Some Hawaii, ahi, Hawaiian salt. And uh, Evan, Mince is that round all onions. to taste? You know, Everything you to your taste. Okay. Green onions. Chopped, okay. Some sesame oil. Okay. And show you. Boy, you chefs uh, got it down pat, so you just go by and eyeball there. Then everything together. Sam, you're going to have to get me these recipes. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, our students here are not excellent cooks like uh, Evan there. So, we're going to know just about how much ingredients to put in each of these dishes that you're preparing. Basically, on the on the on the poke, you just you know you try to get a, a fairly good grade of um, ahi. Uh, you don't want something that's too stringy. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just cut it up into little cubes. Was that about an inch or half yeah. inch cubes? Really small. This yeah. one for the fried rice, we pretty much it's almost like smaller. dice it up. Yeah. For the fried rice, it's a little smaller. For your regular poke, you would ha probably make it a little bit bigger. Um, you add the soy sauce and uh, the sesame seed. Yeah. And some people like to spice it up a little, maybe throw a little bit of pepper in there or um, with the chili pepper water. Right. Uh, depends on what your taste is, and then the salt is just the taste. Okay, get your mix them up really good. You get your so poke all mixed up, and we're gonna start our fried rice. Okay, not on. Now this this is different from your other famous fried rice, right? Yeah, this Thanks. this we just adding the poke in to just kind of give it a little bit of a uh, 
a variety. Uh, we we had it at uh, one of our other locations, and um, it proved to be quite a popular item, so we're moving it up to the, the new restaurant, the new Encore. Uh, we usually just kind of serve it um, by itself, or but sometimes we combination uh, the, the, the fried, uh, pokey fried rice with some other things. Uh, what have you guys been com uh, um, comboing it with? We've had it with the uh, Aji, the uh, Bebe Akuli. That went well. We've done it with um, other fish, like we tried them with the Saba. Yeah, hopefully the oil's hot. And... Hey. So Sam, you're completely out of uh, uh, the green first. growing cattle um, in Waikio Valley. Well, as far as growing, yeah, I, we right now I don't have too much time to uh, go down to the farm. Mostly just um, spending it at the at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But we do um, still get our cattle from uh, Waikio Valley, uh, from Lloyd Kanashiro, who's a good friend of mine. Been getting it for a number of years, and we do grind our own poi. So how did you come up with this new place, uh, Sam? Are you gonna are you gonna move out of the other place no, and no. move to the new place? Um, originally we were planning to just open up a new restaurant because the old one was getting a little bit too small. The kitchen is small. Um, try to imagine Evan and Matt and about six other guys <laughs> on a line that's about ten feet long and trying to rush around on a busy. Uh, Friday night. Okay, a few um, round uh, poke at your rice. That's just regular <laughs> rice. Yeah. yeah, just regular steamed rice. Okay. It's a good way of using, um, you know, uh, uh, your your rice when you have leftover. Yeah, if it's a little dry, it's better. Works a lot better. We yeah. usually uh, toss it um, on a much bigger area. A big flat grill. Yeah, we have a nice big grill. So you can kind of toss it to make it nice and fluffy. We're going to try to toss it a little bit here. Yeah. Catch it all up. About how much sure you would you say all of that is? Uh, That's just for coloring. Uh -huh. Want to get all your rice colored and... That's about what? About a cup right there? This is a quarter cup only. Quarter but cup. And yeah. we had about a couple of cups of um, rice. Okay. About a cup and a half of uh, pokey. Okay. We're going to add a little bit more to give it a little bit more color. And if you have those people who might be um, <coughs> concerned about the sodium intake, you can use a low sodium uh, soy sauce. Okay. And, and you might want to spice it up a little bit. And more onions give it a little bit more flavor. for color. Yeah. Onions would give it a nice green, vibrant color. That's about a uh, quarter cup of chopped uh, green onions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Ideally, if you had some spatulas and a bigger uh, uh, working surface, you would like toss it up. Oh, um, oh on, a, on a flat grill. Yeah, on a flat I grill. Well, if you had a big wok, you could kind of toss it with two um, mm -hmm. spatulas, and that will give it a little bit more fluffiness and airiness to it. So how many different kinds of fried rice do you have, Sam? Right now, we just have the two, um, the, uh, the pokey fried rice and the basic fried rice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we combination the, the fried rice with a lot of different things. One of the more popular ones that we have at Kuhio Grill is um, the fried rice with the boneless Korean chicken. And for those of you who have come to the grill, um, you know, that's one of our more popular ones. See, we got some people smiling out in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, your fried rice. Uh, Half order is good enough for me. Uh, you get a full order of fried rice, and you're going to be stuffed. So, yeah, Evan's doing a full yeah. order right now. This is a full yeah. order. The half order would be about the size of one rice bowl. And you serve that for uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, huh? Anytime. As long as we got fish, we can make the pokey uh, the uh, pokey fried rice. Um, Although there have been times that uh, the fish oh. have been <laughs> kind of tight, so so you 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 can have breakfast anytime you want, and uh, yeah, uh, we serve breakfast all day long at both restaurants. Yeah. 
and just garnish it up with a little bit of the kimchi on the side and okay. got the good overhead on this. Some kimchi there, okay, yeah, you can see it. All right, and that is the ahi poke fried rice. Fried rice. Fried rice. All right, maybe you can put it right up in the front there, okay. Sham, and then uh, overhead camera can kind of zoom down on it and see the ahi okay. poke fried rice. Nice little snack. Very Boy. simple to make. Just just get your poke, uh, your fish, cut it up into about half inch uh, cubes. Um, like I said, try to get a little better grade, otherwise you'll have a lot, a lot of that um, stringy um, part of the fish in there. Um, mix it up with a little bit of salt, a little bit of soy sauce, um, a little bit of um, sesame seed oil. Uh, make sure your pan is a little hot so that when you uh, put your fish in there, it starts to sizzle a little bit and it'll cook really quickly. Um, you don't want to really cook the, f uh, the poke. You just want to kind of sear, sear it. it a little bit. Um, and throw your rice in, just kind of toss it around a little bit, add some soy sauce in, toss that around and it should be done relatively fast. So that's a quick meal. Okay. Uh, I know that students want to do a quick meal, right? Can you guys cook in the dorms? Yeah, that's a fast one. Look at that, that, that yeah. uh, poke fried rice takes up the entire plate. Wow. It's almost like a sumo ahi <laughs> poke fried rice there. You can enough. have some for, for snack and have a little bit left over for breakfast. Just pop yeah. it in a microwave, it's I good. I think I need a doggy yeah. bag for that one. Yeah. Okay, what, what's next, uh, Sam? What are you going to do next? Uh, yosenabe is next. What is a yosenabe? This is a uh, seafood soup, Japanese style that we serve at the new restaurant, Encore. And it starts <coughs> out with Chinese cabbage, and it's all cooked in this. So what kind of dishes do you serve at your restaurant, Sam? Is this specific at, at, to? At, at Encore, we have basically the same menu as we do at Kohio Grill. And then uh, we're, we're emphasizing the Japanese dishes. Uh -huh. Like this is one of them, the yosenabi. Chinese cabbage, bamboo shoots. Okay, t tell us what you're doing there, Evan. Tofu. I'm get lost here. Okay, we have start off with Chinese cabbage. Okay. Bamboo shoots, tofu. Okay. Shiitake mushrooms. Okay. And the shiitake mushroom uh, uh, has been cooked or just soaked? It's just soaked. It's, yeah, rehydrated. Yeah, all you got to do is just, you, most people will see the shiitake mushrooms in the dry state. Just put it in some water, um, let it sit there about 15, 20 minutes or so. And at a restaurant we use the opaka paka, okay, scallops, and shrimp. It's like a seafood stew with veggies. And this is our soup base that we use at the restaurant. What kind of soup is that, like, base? It's a um, chicken. It's, um, chicken stock. Yeah, well, chicken it's stock. It's a chicken and okay. fish stock. Basically, uh, when we debone our chickens, we use the bones. Um, and we throw it all into a big pot, and we just boil it up. And we just use the stock, and then whatever fish we have, we throw it in there and just make a nice, good um, fish and uh, chicken stock. And that's the basis of the yosenabi. Okay, so Evan, what did you put in that pot first? What was it's the first thing you put in? Chinese cabbage. Okay. Bamboo shoots. Okay. Shiitake mushrooms. All right. Tofu. A piece of opaka paka. Some shrimp and scallops. Okay. And just get the fire on. Let it come to a boil. Cook down. Make sure the seafood's all cooked. It's going to so be a little so while. So you actually serve it in that? Yes. Uh, it goes out in the cast iron, cast iron pot. Wow. <coughs> it takes a few minutes to cook up. We want to get the, uh, the, the, the broth to, to boil. Once the broth boils, it'll infuse the, the fish and the um, mushrooms and all the vegetables get to cook. And uh, it takes a couple of minutes, but it's, it's really easy. Um, need a quick meal. So the Chinese yeah. cabbage, is that pre-cooked or? No, 
No. Er everything, everything goes in. Everything goes in and it's uh, natural state. Natural boil. Ah. Then all the flavor comes together in the soup. And so how long do you, uh, you just let that boil? Yeah, normally, normally it would start boiling, but you know, it's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, I never did get my kitchen. This is a good uh, kitchen. <laughs> Not as fast, but just it, it'll go. Just the burner. enough for government work, right? Okay. And you can just add, you know, salt to taste or whatever, but generally the, the soup stock is already nicely flavored, so that, that'll infuse all the vegetables and things in there. W oh. Where can you get some of those cast iron pots like that? Actually, these are ordered from Japan. Oh. Yeah. You can probably just go to an import store. Um, Pen Panda Imports. Panda, Panda oh. Imports. Might I think have okay. <laughs> Okay, give, give just, just, go to a, <laughs> just go to an import yeah. store and you probably... Yeah, they're, they're fairly heavy. The, the cast iron pots are well, at least three or four pounds, yeah. Yeah. They're kind of heavy. And then uh, bring you got all your different credit sizes card with you. those cast iron pots. You can get a bigger one to make a bigger... There are, there are different sizes. Okay. You can make it family style. You know, for... Make it huge yeah. and then everyone just takes out of the big pot, huh? Yeah. Or yeah, so this is going to be a little while. Should I start the uh, yeah. unagi? Well? Actually, uh, on, on this one here, if you didn't like the Chinese cabbage, you could put something else inside. Um, so you can substitute with whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. anything it's you just want. Watercress if you yeah. wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. when, we, when we do have watercress, we finish it off with watercress. But right uh, now, it's okay. like yeah. right now the hard to come by. <laughs> so watercress <laughs> is in pretty short supply. While this is boiling, we'll go on to... Start up with the uh, unagi don. Unagi don. Unagi is a freshwater eel that comes from Japan. Okay, basically... Now, are you using the kind of the fresh <laughs> stuff or...? Um, this comes frozen no, from frozen. Japan. Okay. And... Where can we get it fresh? I don't know. Oh. I know you can buy it in the supermarket in the can. Yeah. Oh this yeah. this out is in the market too, in the frozen. Okay. And this is a uh, kabeyaki sauce. What, what, that what is kind of sauce? It's kabeyaki. You can also buy this in a store. Kabeyaki. That's more With a, a K? Yeah. Yes. That's like a soy sauce. Soy sauce base. That yeah. It's already prepared. All you do is add them in. It's a sweet flavored soy sauce. That's a K-A-B-E-Y-A-K-I. That's close. Close, close enough. enough. Yeah, you <laughs> got to start. <laughs> kabeyaki. Yeah. Soy sauce or Kay. sauce. And you heat that up. In the meantime, almost yeah. boiling here. So about how much of that sauce do you put in there? It's all depend on how much you want. It's this is about, I using right now I'm using about a quarter cup. Okay. And it's straight out of the bottle. You don't have to do anything to it. Okay. Kabe, kabe yaki. Okay. On the Yosinabi, once it starts to boil, it'll get, it'll start cooking really fast. So as, as if you're watching your dish, um, you want to kind of keep an eye on it because once it starts to boil, um, you want to kind of control your heat so it doesn't overcook. Otherwise, um, uh, you'll have really soggy vegetables and everything else a bit, a little too soggy. You, you don't put any rice in there, huh? It's just all... One, yeah, it's just the, the rice is actually would be served on the side. Oh, I see. Okay. It's almost ready. The unagi is already cooked when we get it, it's frozen. And we're just finishing it off with the sauce. Okay. And that's served it's, it's really tombody style yeah. on, in a bowl, bed of rice. Okay. And those uh, special bowls there for, for the uh, Unage Donbori, you can get it in the import store also probably. Yeah, those Kay. are fairly common. And they come in all various sizes too. Okay. The Yosinabi is really good when it's like cold, because it's uh -huh. like a soupy base. And we sell a lot of it, especially uh, colder Spe days. Especially on those cold, rainy days yep. that we're having here in Hilo. Yep. Good for farmers, but not too much rain, right? Yeah, wow, they say 
No rain, no rainbows, so Jeez. gotta have rain. Okay, then to finish off the Yosinabe, top it off with some green onions. And like I said, if we had watercress, we'll top it off with watercress also. But right now, hard to come by, so. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of like julienned uh, right. green onions, okay. How's my stove doing over there? Is it uh, getting, bring it to Just up to a boil? starting to boil. And as far as the unagi, when it's done, it's just gotta hope that's not gonna take all night. <laughs> no, it's on the it's on the unagi, you there. want it to kind of do a slow, slow oh. cook. Otherwise, the uh, sugar will start to caramelize and it'll burn too fast. I so see. once you get it up to heat, um, you just kind of have to watch it and adjust your flame accordingly. Okay. Unless you like caramelized, fished, <laughs> burnt. Okay. Almost like having creme brulee with burnt sugar. Okay, and uh, Yosinabe goes served in there the pot. Go. Nice and hot and steamy. Wow, so people yeah. got to be careful with yeah. that uh, yeah. cast iron pot there because that's super hot, huh? Okay, why don't we push it right next to the uh, ahi poke fried rice and our overhead camera can zoom down on that. Huh? Oh, yose oh yeah. nabe. And this is the ponzu sauce, which is a dipping sauce for the yose nabe. And it's made with um, rice wine vinegar, mirin, and soy. Oh, oh, what, what do you call that sauce again? It's pa ponzu. Ponzu sauce. How do you spell that? P-O-N-Z-U. It's a dipping sauce. Yeah. Ponzu sauce. And what's, what's in there again? It's um, rice, rice wine vinegar. Mirin and show you. That also you make it to taste pretty much how yeah, if you strong don't, you if want. If you don't it. find that in the market, you can make it yourself. We yeah. just some they actually sell it in a bottle. Yeah. It, it comes in a we bottle. We make our own. <laughs> oh, so it's just easier just to buy a ponzu sauce. Yeah, you yeah. you could, or you, okay. if you want to make it. See, if you make it, you can make it to taste all you want it. Now, if you wanted to make it uh, yourself, do you, do you have the proportion of the rice, wine, vinegar, and the shoyu, and the <laughs> mirin? Not, not really. No, no. you can just, just, just kind of mix it like one to one, and then just add a little of the mirin to taste. Yeah. Okay. The, the, mir the mirin helps sweeten it up yeah. a little bit. So, so, in other words, you get the rice, wine, vinegar, and shoyu one to one, and then you dab in the mirin, mirin to to your taste. Yeah. And okay. now the unagi, put a little bit sauce on the rice. Mm. Then you put your unagi down and then you sauce over. Mm. This is really good. I had some the other night. Yeah, it's a little good. Yeah. For some rice just for this is like basically bowl of rice and some fish. Now I guess if, if you're real lazy, you can you can buy the can unagi. Not yeah. the same. It's not mm -hmm. the same. The can unagi is like soft. So. Oh, so this one's got a little bit more uh, bite to it, huh? Yeah. And that's our yeah, unagi Yeah, it's a little dombody. firmer because the one in the can is... Uh, um, kind of melts in yeah, your mouth. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll fall apart. You I have see. to be... It's really it's delicate. Okay. Okay, that yeah. is the... Okay. So that's these are three hobby. simple dishes. Um, you can all cook. So we have, first we have the uh, pokey fried rice. All you do is you, you find some nice fish. You can cut it up into little cubes about anywhere from quarter inch to half inch. Um, just look at the, um, the, um, the quality of the fish. Make sure it's not too stringy. Um, mix up the fish um, with a little bit of salt, soy sauce, and a little bit of um, sesame seed oil. Just kind of low the thing. Um, Turn your fire up a little high, add a little bit of oil. Uh, when it's nice and hot, throw it in your, um, your poke to just kind of sear it. And then add some rice in there, toss that around, add some soy sauce for flavoring. Um, and when you have a consistent color in your um, fried rice, you can just add a little bit of um, green onions if you like green onions. Or if you want to add a little more color, some people put um, red um, kamabu coal just cut it up into little pieces or some eggs to give it nice color. Some people even throw in, um, what's that, peas. Peas. Yeah. Now, Sam, you, you were uh, 
before you got into the restaurant business, you used to go to Waipio Valley and, and farm wetland taro. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what got you into the restaurant business? Um, well, originally we were looking out, when I was uh, doing my farming, I, I sold uh, taro leaves. And uh, we were looking at uh, expanding the market for, for the taro leaves. And we did, um, my mother used to just make uh, la laos. And we decided that we wanted to get into um, uh, producing lao laos since I was growing a lot of leaves. <coughs> and, and to do um, any kind of food business, you need to get a certified kitchen. So we're looking around for a certified kitchen. And basically, the cost of a certified kitchen is just like having a restaurant. Um, so we decided, well, we're looking for a restaurant. And we could use the kitchen to produce some lao laos. And that's how we ended up with Kuhio Grill. And took a little bit more time to do the restaurant, and the restaurant over the years became more successful than just doing lao laos. Although we do quite a bit of uh, selling of the lao laos. A one pound lao lao is one of the signature dishes at Kuhio Grill. Um, and that's basically where we're at. And now we've got two restaurants, so. That's the famous one pound. One not pound. An, yep. Not an ounce less, one pound. Well, it's at least a pound, probably more. <laughs> Okay. Because yep. when the ladies make it, it's like more than a pound. Now that, that, that you need a doggy bag also, right? Oh, no. A lot of people finish it up. And whack it at one sitting. Yep. They do a pretty good job. Matt's going to be doing... Simon Combo. Our, yeah. And this has been pretty yeah. popular. This has been, uh, I think it started at KG. Yeah. Yeah. At Kuyo Grill. Grill. So, you got to tell us what you're doing, Matt. All right. Okay, right now I'm heating up uh, some of the broth, the salmon broth, Kay. which is uh, the, the dashi. And can I have my cooked noodles already. Can I here. use a packaged salmon? You can use any type of salmon. Okay, noodles, and, yeah. and you use the broth from the, the package? You can do that too. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. ours one was homemade. We make it from scratch. You, you, you folks make your own dashi? Yes. Okay. It's basically the same thing. We have, since we debone a lot of chicken, we use the bones, we make a broth, we just uh, throw all the bones into a, a big pot and fill it up with water, boil it for a couple of hours and add a, whatever leftover you have and it comes out pretty good. So Sam, when you mm -hmm. make your broth, do you use uh, all kinds of bones, fish bones, uh, uh, beef bone and pork bone or? No, for this one here, we're just using chicken bone. Okay. Um, because if you mix uh, pork and the, the beef in, the, the flavoring gets, tends to get a little muddied. Oh. And sometimes people just like either chicken or pork or whatever. Okay. But chicken tends to be more of a uh, pretty much generally accepted. Okay. Because there's some people who, um, you can make it with uh, fish or shrimp stock, but some people are allergic to uh, uh, seafood. So uh, we find that chicken stock is a little bit more generally accepted. Okay, and you kind of make that uh, uh, yourself uh, at the restaurant? Yeah, we make all <coughs> the stock ourselves. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, cooked noodles in our salmon bowl. Okay. And the first thing we add is uh, cabbage and uh, mustard cabbage. Mustard cabbage? Yeah. That's been pre-cooked? No. Okay. Yeah, this is the one buck and the mustard cabbage. Okay. You can put either a little or a lot. Okay. Then we have some uh, char siu. Okay, char siu. That you can just buy at your local supermarket and chop it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we make our own char siu. In fact, Evan makes it. It's just uh, the get a pork butt, uh, put a little bit of uh, char siu seasoning on, and throw it in the oven for how many hours? Uh, about two hours. Two hours at what? 350. 250. Okay. Yeah, slow cooking. And we put uh, some kamabuku. Okay. And shredded uh, egg sheets. Shredded uh, egg. eggs. Yeah. So you pan fry the egg into a big sheet and then cut, cut it, up it up into slices. Yeah. Okay. Do you add anything to the egg when you fry it? Uh, Sugar. No, we don't. Just straight egg. Just straight egg. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for our Simon combo today, we have that, and it comes with a scoop of macaroni salad. Okay. Also, uh, this yellow stuff here is cocoa, or pickled radish, pickled daikong. Okay. Yeah. And your choice of meat. Today I chose uh, 
yakitori chicken. Oh, okay. So at the restaurant, when you look into the menu and you order the Simon combo, you can have any type of meat, like uh, pork katsu, uh, katsu, uh, mahi-mahi, terry pork, uh, fried oysters, fried shrimp, uh, fried scallops, and I think that's it, yeah? Okay. So Sam, mm -hmm. um, how long have you been in the restaurant business now? Since, um, geez, 1995, February 95. Wow, almost that's about years. nine years, yeah. almost 10 years. Wh okay. What do you think uh, uh, you have to do to have a successful restaurant? Um, food has to taste good, prices are reasonable, and service is good. And good employees. Okay. And work uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy part. Are you, uh, are you looking for people to work for you? We are looking for a lot of people to work for us. <laughs> How many more cooks we need? We need about five more cooks and at least five more cooks. How about them? Okay, as soon as your dashi is hot, so you kind of bring the dashi to a boil yeah. and, yeah. and just yeah. pour it right in. Yeah. The noodles is already pre-cooked, but if your noodles aren't cooked, you want to kind of get it boiled. In fact, you can boil it up in the, in the dashi to infuse the flavor into the noodles. Mm. There you go, nice and steaming hot. Uh, so this is our Simon combo. Maybe... Uh, okay. Well, what and you can the do, combo, Sam. The Simon, we can have, you can have a fried noodles combo, or you can have miso soup okay. added to that. Ah. Yeah. So okay. there's different varieties of it. If you don't like just regular Simon, you can have miso Simon. Actually, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, later on, you can put all the dishes on the table in the front, and okay. then, uh, <coughs> then you'll have a little more space on the counter there. You got enough space to work? <coughs> so, uh, so far, we have... Uh, Ahi poke fried rice, uh, yosenabe, and unage donbori, and, and also simon, a simon combo. And what is uh, next on the agenda? Next, I'm going to do uh, Nitsuki ahi belly. Okay. Boy, you guys are going too fast for me. Uh, you got to really explain what you're doing. Okay. You found that the ahi belly. Um, the soft part of the fish is be really popular with the uh, the older generation. Uh -huh. So we decided to put it on the menu, um, and it's 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 really uh, been popular. Most people like fillets, but uh, the belly is really the soft part. And the, I guess for the old timers, um, they really um, appreciate when you have this on the menu, because not too not too many places um, have it. And Matt's going to be doing. Uh, uh, preparing it Mitsuki style, which is with uh, basically a soy sauce and sake. Okay. So if you love your sake, you'll enjoy this one. This is oh, it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Although when you cook same. it, the sake it's will... It's a sweet will, sake, will, actually. Yeah, ...will burn off. It's the same. Okay. I got my pan all heated up. Okay. And then I'm going to put a cup and a half of water. Cup and a half of water? Mm-hmm. Okay. Half cup of uh, soy sauce. Half cup soy sauce, mm -hmm. okay. And then? And about a half cup of sugar. Half a cup of sugar? Yeah. Okay. And a tablespoon of mirin. Tablespoon of mirin. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a sweet sake. And Bring that it in is a sweet sake. You can find it in the market. Okay. Or you can just add a little bit more sugar if you want. Mirin is just um, a liquefied type of um, sweetener. So Sam, you've been on our mm -hmm. program many times, and uh, I, I, uh, I, you used to raise the lotus root. That that always really impressed me when you raised the lotus root. Uh, do you still have that going on the farm? No, um, I haven't been able to keep up with it, so it's kind of like overgrown right now. Um, the, the restaurant has just been keeping me too busy, so I had to make a choice. Um, I enjoyed uh, growing the lotus root, 
but it's really hard work. Um, so you completely it. lost your stock? Uh, I'm sure some of it is probably still there. I just have to go find it. I it's see. full of weeds right now. Okay, what I'm doing is just trying to bring this to a simmer. Okay. And when it comes into a simmer, then you can add about uh, a few slices of ginger. Okay, ginger. Mm -hmm. Fresh ginger. Fresh ginger. Okay. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, melt the sugar. Okay. I if you wanted to use uh, other fish parts, uh, you can use uh, other uh, other parts of ahi, yeah, other than the belly, if you wanted. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh you can use any kind any of fish, type of fish you have, basically. Yeah. Okay. This is so what we serve. You say this ahi belly is nice and soft and yeah. tender. Huh? It's the soft part of the fish. Okay. And of course, uh, you can buy that at the supermarket very easily. Yeah, it's it's pretty much available. Um, although um, there's a pretty good demand for it, and sometimes, it, like um, the last few months, fish has been pretty the expensive. Su the supply has not been there. So is the ahi belly uh, more reasonable than, say, uh, sashimi block of uh, ahi? Yeah, the sashimi block is, is at a premium. I see. You'll pay, what, 10 to $15 a pound or whatever, depending on what the, uh, the, Great the uh, supply yeah. is and the demand. These ahi belly runs much less. They also sell the, the bone, the... the what do you call the backbone of the oh fish? Oh, yeah, that's really good for fish. You know, you, I mean, fish soup. Uh -huh. You get the head, the bones, you throw it into water, boil it, make some fish stock, um, drain, you know, take out all the bones and stuff. You can drain it and, and filter it, and that'll give you a really good fish stock. And just get some vegetables, some, some cabbage, um, Chinese cabbage, or whatever it is, is, you know, to your liking, and put whatever you want, just make a fish soup out of it. It's really that, that, good. that would also be good for this uh, Yoshinabe, huh? Yeah, you could, you could probably use it in that. Okay. It's just about ready to... So Matt, uh, where, where did you get your experience uh, in uh, cooking? I uh, actually started when real, I was real young at, uh, with my mom, my mother. Uh, you know, in the kitchen and stuff like that. And I, I think you've been on the, the program before with yeah, the, with the uh, Community Arts. College, Colony yes. Arts program. Mm -hmm. I've been on it, uh, I think, a couple times on top there. Well, you're so a TV star already. Then. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bam! Kick it <laughs> up on the expert. Mat. <laughs> right, there you go. Are they lining up at the door for <laughs> autographs, Matt? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to, uh, it's starting to boil, so now we start to put in our ahi belly. Okay. And this is, what we serve at the restaurant is about eight ounces. So it's not actually, a, you're, you're not frying it, you're kind of you kind of boiling yeah, it. Yeah, all the juices are, are, you know, going into oh. the, the fish itself. You're uh, kind of just a, poaching it back, basically. Yeah, that's an yeah. interesting yeah. way of cooking it. And it infuses the flavor into the fish when you do this. Oh, might have to try that out. Or have my wife do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go ahead and cook for her. One day. You got all this experience already cooking now, so. <laughs> it cooks very fast. Once, when it's boiling, just, it's like, you know, basically 30 seconds, you flip it over and yeah. just let it cook. How many guys in the classroom here cook? See? Wow. Give you guys credit. Well, I, I guess you have to, huh? Otherwise, you starve. Well, <laughs> if I had to cook, I mean, you know, I would cook, but. <laughs> How's it look, Matt? It's coming along great. Okay. And uh, what about you, Evan? Uh, how, how did you uh, get into cooking? Why don't you get right there into the uh, group there? You've been with uh, Kuhio Grill? Uh, eight years now. Eight years? Eight years. Wow, one year shy of g grand opening, huh? Yeah, just about. Okay. So how many cooks do you have, Sam? <laughs> oh, boy. You don't know? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Got 10, 15? No, at least oh, 15, 15, I say. At least 15. 15 cooks. Wow. Four. 
at least at about least. yeah and and what what about uh, waitresses and things like that we got about 65 70 people on staff right now wow and you say you you take them to vegas once a year <laughs> <laughs> It's just a rumor, Jack. It's oh. just a rumor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just came back from Vegas in what, January? January. Oh, January. Yeah. oh yeah. They got to go back and collect their money. Yeah, still working, yeah, couldn't I retire. That's right. I asked Evan, asked him how he did, and he said he's still working, so I figured he didn't get the mega buck. No mega bucks. Okay. They'll How's be going home next Matt? year. It's going pretty good on this. How do you it's know when, when it, uh, the uh, ahi belly is cooked? Uh, by checking the fish and making sure that you know, it, it's cooked in the middle. You know, so, by eye. so it gets <laughs> a little bit firmer or yeah. something when, uh, as it, it, uh, it cooks? It gets a little bit firmer as it cooks. Okay. Yeah, you can just get a little knife or something and just check the inside. Mm -hmm. But some people like it kind of half done yeah yeah, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to overcook it otherwise yeah. it'll get really chewy sinewy. i see if you yeah. if you like but if the longer you cook it the more intense the flavor gets into the fish oh. yeah. so some people actually like it well done where the shoyu and sugar caramelize mm -hmm. so if i get this nitsuke ahi belly i i can tell you i want it well done oh, no problem medium yeah. rare or whatever raw i'll just pour a sauce over for you okay yeah. <laughs> Cook another to an please, eh, uh, Aim to Kevin? please, yes. Okay. Another thing, too, about this dish is that um, if you reduce the, the amount of um, sauce in it, it tends to thicken up, and then you can pour the, the, the thickness of the sauce on top of the... Okay, the so, so actually that sauce, if you cook it much longer, it'll thicken it'll up. It'll thicken up. And then you'll just kind of pour it over... The ahi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we garnish it with... To know. reduce it, you just flick the flame up, just turn it on Let high it and just yeah. kind of let it boil off a little bit and it'll thicken itself up. Or you can <laughs> add just a little bit of um, cornstarch and water. Oh and it'll I thicken see. up and you can just kind of put a little bit of gravy on top. Okay. Yeah, it goes really nice. You can, you know, serve it like with your uh, pokey fried rice. And then uh, what else do you serve with, uh, with the uh, Nitsuke ahi belly? It's with your uh, rice, rice and your choice of toss or mac. Choice of salad. Okay. Leave them on, then go caramelize. Wow. Yeah. What is next? Okay, the next thing is uh, steamed opaka paka. There's a lot of fish on tonight. <laughs> this is, um, yeah. You're on a restricted <laughs> diet, Jack. That's right. Fish yeah, is good for you. you. Fish is good for you. Yeah. So I mean, no offense to the beef industry or anything, but uh, eat beef too if you want. Pork. I'm an Aggie, so I got to promote not only fish, but for our aquaculture program, but also the livestock industry. Yeah, in fact, we're looking for sources of fresh mullet, if anybody knows where we can get some fresh mullet out there. I want to do some steamed fish at the restaurant, some steamed mullet. Okay. Um, so if anybody's selling any fresh mullet, let me know. Okay. I may have to go fishing, Sam. Okay, we'll take you <laughs> up on that. Get my little boat and go out there and do some, get my uh, limu and go mullet fishing. So, th what is the next dish? Uh, We're going to do steamed opaka paka. Okay. What are you going to do? Oil oh. some water over there? No, no. Uh, peanut it's oil. peanut oil. Oh. What I do first to the opaka paka filet is okay. I season it with uh, some salt. All right. Now, you, you can buy the, f uh, the opaka paka all filleted like that? Yes, you can. Okay. Put it into our baking pan here. And then I'm going to put some uh, mid in. Okay. And for this fish, it's about a tablespoon. Okay, a tablespoon of meat in. And a salt, the salt to taste. Okay. And, and normally at the restaurant, we uh, steam it. But since we don't have a steamer over here, I'm just going to... We get the magic steamer magic today. <laughs> okay. You put it into the steamer for about uh, cool. 10 to 15 minutes. And it should come out, you know, white fish like this, white like this, cooked. Now, uh, Sam, if uh, mm -hmm. we finish up early, I'm going to have you give a lecture to us on <laughs> how to grow taro, uh, <laughs> wetland taro. Okay, so we plate it up. And we add 
minced green onions. Minced green onions, okay. Garlic and ginger. All three, mi minced, All three together? minced together. Yes. About equal parts, would you say? Uh, I'd say equal parts of the ginger and the uh, gar uh, green onion. Okay. And less on the garlic. But uh, you okay. know, if you want the garlic taste, then you can always add some more. Okay. If you like the garlic, go for it. Huh? Go for it. Garlic is good. Wow, this, a this lot of medicinal value. This is almost like uh, steaming the great big opaka paka, but here you're just doing the small filet, huh? Yes, yeah. yes. That's right. one portion at the restaurant. This is one portion at the restaurant that you I get when see. you order. Okay. Is, it, is this one where you're going to get the peanut oil? Or yes, right. I have some peanut oil over here heating up. All right. So as soon cool. as it gets hot, then we pour it on. Ah, that, yeah, that, that, that you can do for your wife, Jack. Just yeah. steam it and a little salt and put a little peanut oil in there and got it made. Sam, do you, oh, do you cook watching. for your wife, Sam? All the time. All uh, the time. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to have to ask Nalene <laughs> and uh, see if you're telling me the truth there, uh, Sam. If today's Thursday, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> okay. Kay. So uh, wh what else do you uh, mix in with the, the peanut oil? You just heat up the peanut oil. That's all we we, we don't mix anything in it. Just, just heat it up. and, and yeah. you get the peanut oil till it's almost uh, boiling hot. No, no, no. Just before, just it, before starts it starts to, to burn. burn. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So you just kind of have to watch, watch. it because yeah. it'll get it'll get up to temperature, and just before it starts to burn, it'll start to you see a little bit of smoke, smoke coming out of there, off. and you just pull it off and just put it right over your fish, and then you can hear the snap. Snap, crackle, pop. and pop, yeah. Oh, That'll infuse, uh, <laughs> and what that does, that infuses the flavor of, of your uh, ginger, garlic, and, and is that green onions in there? Green onions. Green onions, you know, into the fish and kind of give it a nice searing taste. Can you can you mix in some cilantro in there too? So oh yeah, if you like cilantro, you like that's cilantro really good. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, yeah, you can, instead of the green onions, just, just mix it with a whole bunch of cilantro. So to mix that ginger, green mm. onion, garlic, y you put it inside a blender and blend it all up? Food processor, food yeah. Food processor. Yeah, just use a food processor. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, we, we got our peanut oil up, ready. But, uh, that, that might be a good idea, uh, another way to do it. It's a lot easier. It's a lot faster. In, in a second or two, it'll be done. And we want to heat it up before you. There you go. Mm. There you go. Hope you can hear the sizzle on TV. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Top it off with a little more green, green onion. Sam, you guys are cooking too fast. Gonna this have is to ready to eat. You're going to have to give us a lecture on uh, growing taro. Okay. And uh, this is very simple. Is that it for yeah. tonight? Um, that we got six dishes. Yeah. All right. Six dishes. And we got a lot of fish over here. Uh, we're emphasizing fish. Um, the opaka paka was really simple. Just um, get your opaka paka. Um, you can steam the opaka paka. Well, this is about, about a half a pound. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. yeah. It's about a half a pound. Um, you can get it filleted um, and it takes about 10-15 minutes to steam it or you can poach it. Uh, that's a nice healthy way to do it. Um, and just finish it off with a little bit of um, uh, was that ginger, green onions, and cilantro garlic. if you want. Yeah. We have um, um, garlic in there. I, li I prefer garlic. I like a lot of garlic. And then just uh, warm up some peanut oil um, and just drizzle with the peanut oil. When it's sizzling, you can just add some salt to taste. So maybe what you can do, Sam, mm -hmm. is put all the dishes up on the table in the front. Okay. And then we can uh, kind of pan in on all the dishes. Uh, so we've come to that portion of the class where those of you in the uh, viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening. Uh, tonight we're featuring uh, a local restaurant here uh, in Hilo. And uh, we have the owner, Sam Araki, and also joining Sam, we have Evan Cambra, the assistant manager there, and Matt Miguel, who is the catering manager. And then uh, as uh, uh, we wait for our phone calls to come in, the numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 
1-800-761-7726 and 961-9046. And also I might mention that uh, Sam, uh, prior, go prior to getting into the restaurant business, was uh, a uh, taro farmer up in YPO Valley. And uh, in YPO Valley, that's uh, home of our wetland taro here on the Big Island. And if you have any questions about growing wetland taro and possibly uh, lotus uh, root, uh, Sam is an expert and he can tell you all about uh, how to do that. And if you have any questions regarding our presentation this evening, please give us a call. And uh, <coughs> the dishes that uh, were prepared for us, uh, maybe while we wait for some phone calls, uh, we can get our overhead camera to, and pan in on the various dishes uh, from left to right. And then uh, uh, Sam can explain the dishes as uh, we view the different uh, plates. So there we go, Sam. What, what is that? Uh, okay, the first, first dish up is the uh, pokey fried rice. Okay. Um, to make it, uh, you just make your regular pokey. Get get some um, some fish. You can use ahi or Sam. Or uh, let me uh, interrupt you. We have two callers on the line. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Hi where are you calling from? Uh, calling from Mountain View. Mountain View. Okay, and your question. Uh, yeah. You know your overhead camera? Yes. Yeah, you got some static there, man. What, what's that? Your camera, your overhead camera has some static. Static? I don't think yeah, the camera's going to make any static, but uh, maybe uh, uh, the microphones might. Well, yeah, do you have another question for us? I'm sorry, I can't hear the question. Hello? Yes, go ahead. All right. You know that pokey that you guys made? Right. Yeah, what's that deal? You guys were wasting some perfectly good pokey on that. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a matter of preference now. What may be good for you might be good for someone else. But True. I, pre I appreciate your comment. All right. Well, Have another question? Another question? No, that's it. Okay, well thank you very much for calling from Mountain View. And uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Um, hello? Hi. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? Is them flowers edible? No, they're not. Sam? Um, Just a okay. no, no, they're not. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Okay, thank you for calling from Hilo. Uh, I guess those are not edible flowers. And uh, we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here uh, at the University of Hawaii Hilo campus. And uh, you're watching Focus on Agriculture, uh, Agriculture 194C, a one-credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management. And this evening, we're featuring Kuhio Grill. And uh, my guests this evening are Sam Araki, the owner, and Evan Cambra, and uh, Matt Miguel. And while we wait for some phone calls, maybe uh, we can get our overhead camera back on our dishes and uh, we can pan on it. And Sam, you can uh, describe. Okay, there we go with the uh, ahi poke fried rice. And if we move over to the right a little bit. Oh, we have another caller. We'll take the caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hi, I'm Sonny from Hilo. Okay, and your question? And I was wondering, on, on your steamed opaka paka, uh -huh. how much of the peanut oil do you put? Okay, Matt, how much well, peanut for, oil do you use? For an 8 ounce uh, filet, I would put about a quarter cup of peanut oil. A quarter cup? Yes. A quarter cup. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for calling. And do we have another phone caller? 
We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yes, I am calling from Hakalao. Okay, Hakalao. Uh, and your question? Could you guys go over the ingredients of the fried rice poke again? Uh, the ingredients for the fried rice uh, or the ahe poke fried rice, uh, Evan, why don't you go over that one more time for our Hawaii friend in <coughs> Hakalao? Hawaiian salt, sesame oil, green onion, Round onion shoyu. you. And how do you prepare it? How do you prepare it? How, how do you prepare it? Oh. Can I hear a question? Well, how, do you, how do you prepare, how do you prepare the dish? Prepare it? Oh, well, just you get your ahi, cut it up, oh. and all the ingredients to taste however much you want in, and just mix it up. You cut up the poke, uh, the the fish in about for the uh, fried rice. You want to cut it up like into smaller yeah. pieces, maybe what S half inch or less. Um, Real small, yeah. Yeah, cut it up to smaller pieces. Easier to uh, eat with the rice. Yeah, and then you add it. the um, uh, salt, salt, shoyu, shoyu green, onions, green onions, round onions, sesame oil. Mix it up, and to make the fried rice, a little bit oil in your pan. Put your ahi in. Add your rice, show you for color and taste, and it, the show you will be depend on how strong you want it. And that's it. Add green onions for color. Okay. Um, hey, I have one more question. Um, what is that green stuff on top of the soup? It's just um, green, green onions, onion. sliced green onions. Oh, it's green onions. Oh, I thought it was string beans. <laughs> 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 it's Julian like string beans. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for calling from Hakalau on the Hamakua coast here. And we don't have a phone caller. Do we have a question from the classroom? I think we do. Great. Press the button and... Uh, yeah, on the Simon, or yeah, Simon Hill Hakalau Hamakua Hill School, um, what is the how do you get the char siu flavor? How do you get the char siu flavor? Yeah. We make we have our own marinade that we make, and we uh, marinate it with it the, with the pork, and we let it sit for about a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. About two three two, days. Three days. And then we pop it in the oven at two fifty for so many. And many. what do you put in the char siu mix mixture that you uh, marinated in? Okay, there's a char siu base, and you can buy it in the store. If you're really lazy, you can go to the foods uh, to you the supermarket <laughs> and get this char siu mix. They have it in uh, dry name form. Any brands, yeah. but there's a special mix. They have dry buy. form and wet form. Yeah. So, yeah. and then you can mix that up and coat it onto your pork butt and uh, roast. And I think all the. Yeah, if uh, I give you all the ingredients now, it's like quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a mix that you can just mix. use it on. On. Uh, I think it's a powder mix. Yeah, there's a powder and a wet. There's and two, and two and types. Mix. Just look for char siu mix. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Oops. Hi, Dr. Fuji. Hi. Where are you calling from? Kaneohe. Do you know who this is? Kaneohe. Yes, I know this who one this I is. Who? Oh. Harolyn. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling from. Um, Okay. okay. Go ahead. I was wondering if they made um, any of the meals um, as specials. Okay, as Sam. Uh, do you have any other specials? I think it is. <coughs> any special <coughs> special any of these are specials special? or? Yeah. Uh, how, how, uh, do you have specials of the day or? Um. I don't quite understand the question. Can you repeat the question? I was wondering if the meals you made, do you guys serve them at your restaurant? Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. All of these are served at the restaurant. Um, they're all... The, the ahi poke fried rice, yosenabe, and the uh, unagi don is at Ankor. And uh, opaka paka at Ankor. Uh, ahi bali and uh, saiming kambo is at Kuhio Grill. And I had one more question. 
Thanks, Harold. Do you guys have another restaurant, or you only have one? Two. Two. Oh, we have two. We have two. Yeah, I've seen it the twice today. Oh. The second <laughs> one is called Encore by Kuhio Grill. Okay, thank I'm you. Sure, I'm sure you have another question for us, Harolyn. We miss you in class. Have another okay. question. I know, I had to fly home for Easter. Oh, okay. Have a good Easter. <laughs> Final eggs. Okay, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Okay, well, thank you. That's uh, Harolyn. Uh, she's one of our students in the class. And, of course, tomorrow, tomorrow is holiday. And uh, do we have another caller? No callers. Where are all my friends tonight? Uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And we're coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo Keeney Library. And the phone numbers are on the screen. And we have another caller. So could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Okay, call from Hilo on your question. Um, there was one of the dishes where you put a really dark shoyu looking sauce on the fish and I was just wondering what that sauce was. Okay, uh, I'll leave that to Evan. The, is that the unagi donburi? I think it is. That's a kabayaki sauce that you can buy in a bottle. Kabe ya yaki sauce. Does that answer the question, Hilo? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for calling. And while, while we wait for phone callers, we're going to go and pan over the dishes again. Uh, can we get our overhead camera going on the dishes and uh, have uh, Sam kind of uh, explain uh, what was prepared there? There we go. What is that now? Sam, on TV there. Uh, that's a um, <coughs> Yosinabi. Um, okay. Kevin can explain to you what it was. That's our seafood soup. Has Chinese cabbage, bamboo shoots, shiitake mushrooms, tofu, a piece of fish, shrimp, scallops, and a seafood broth. When you prepare the yosinabi, um, you, you need to give yourself a little bit of time because the preparation of the uh, ingredients would take a little bit of time. Um, the one that takes probably the most time is the uh, dried shiitake mushrooms. Um, normally, people would find it in a dried state, so you would uh, take your pieces, put it in water, um, soak it for 20 minutes or so. Yeah, just rehydrate. If you're in a rush, you can put it in hot, hot water. water. <laughs> um, Cut off the stems, it'll, it'll get rehydrated very quickly. Um, you want to kind of keep the juice. Um, there's a lot of flavor to that juice, and you can probably add it to your Yosenabe soup, and, and, and it'll give it a nice little um, um, different flavor over there. Because the basis of the Yosenabe soup is the, um, the chicken broth that we have. Okay, maybe we can pan over to the next dish while we wait for some phone calls. And I understand that we are having some audio difficulties, and uh, maybe that might be a reason why uh, we are not uh, receiving any phone calls tonight. I, I'm sorry that uh, the audio of tonight's program is not uh, going out very well to you, uh, but I can guarantee you that the audio is leaving the UH Hilo Studios in excellent condition, but after it leaves the Hilo studio, uh, we have no control whatsoever. So hopefully uh, the audio can be uh, uh, fixed and uh, you'll be able to hear us a little better. Uh, but in the meantime, do we have any questions from the classroom? We have a question from the classroom. Fantastic. You're going to get an A for the class. Go ahead. For the steamed opaka opaka, if you're allergic to peanut oil, can you use um, another type of oil? Yes, you can use another type of oil. Uh, any type any or? Type. Okay. You can, you use a canola. you can use canola, sesame oil, sesame oil salad oil. oil. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Or, or some just ve uh, Western oil, vegetable oil. Yeah. But uh, why, why do you folks use the peanut oil? Uh, the infusion with the, the nutty flavor to the fish is a kind of okay. a good combination. Okay. Uh, I guess we don't, do we have another phone call? Make it loud. 
Oh, we have another caller. So uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I guess we're ha we're having problem not only with our audio going out but with our phone calls coming in. Got to help me out, folks. Uh, okay, Sam. Uh, maybe you want to. Uh, I can ask you some questions about uh, growing taro. Uh, Sam, uh, you know when you grow wetland taro, uh, what variety of taro do you grow, and w which is the best variety for poi? Um, which is the best variety for poi? There's um, several hundred different varieties of taro. Uh, the more popular varieties for poi um, is the lehua um, family, and there's different kinds of lehua um, taro. Um, okay, the, Sam. The I'm lehua let you taro. Off the I'm going to let you off the hook. Has uh, a darker color, so it'll give it nice color. We have another uh, caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Do Hello, are you there? Oh my goodness! Looks like the caller hung up. Well, keep calling us. Uh, we've got another. 25 minutes, so <laughs> we have another hello. caller. So, uh, hello. hello. Oh, there you go. Where are you calling from? Hello? You like them? Hello? Hello, yes, where are you calling from? Hello? Where, where are you calling from? Did the caller hang up? I think they got cut off. Okay. Lost call, cell phone. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, the caller just hung up. Please uh, hang in there and uh, give us a call. The numbers are on the screen, 974-7726 and 961-9046. And we are coming to you live this evening. And uh, we have with us one of our local restaurants and uh, Sam Maraki, the owner, and Evan Cambra and Matt Miguel. And this evening they prepared for us several dishes. Uh, we had a ahi poke fried rice, uh, yoshinabe, unagi dombori, uh, steamed opaka paka, uh, Simon combo. And we have a caller. So will the caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on Hello. the air? Yes, where are you calling from? It, did we lose the call? That's my question. Yes, go ahead. Oh, Dr. Vajiki. I beg your pardon? Uh, this is Al from Kailua. Okay, Kailua. I wanted to know in the uh, green onion uh, mix that they put on top of the, uh, the steamed about. fish. Yes. Was that uh, just green onion, garlic, and Hawaiian salt? Uh, Matt, that's why don't you go over that again? That's a combination of minced green onion, um, ginger, and garlic. So you want to make it about one to one of the ginger and the green onions, but then the, the garlic you want to kind of cut a cut back on it. Cut okay. back a little bit on that unless right. you really like the uh, ginger uh, garlic, right? Right. And then you put it in a food processor. Yeah, and you mince it all up. Okay. Does that answer the question from Kailua? I guess it did. Do we have another caller? No callers, and we it is uh, eight after eight, and we have another twenty minutes. We have a question from our classroom. Go ahead, Marilyn. Um, on both restaurants, do you have any other best sellers on your menu next to these your popular um, <coughs> dishes? Um, well, the fried rice combos at Kohio Grill do very well. It's a daily special. Monday, Monday, f Saturday, Monday, and Friday we run the fried rice with the boneless Korean chicken. That's really popular. Tuesday, Thursdays, I think it's fried rice with chicken cutlet. 
and Wednesday and Saturday is a fried rice with the oyster sauce chicken. And those are really popular. Uh, Encore, well, we just opened up right now. A lot of people are trying our different items there. But like the Oyaku Dombodi is very popular. Dombodi's are pretty good. The shrimp tempura over at uh, Encore yeah, that's is really, really popular. popular. People really like the shrimp tempura. It's really, um, we give you a big, nice big size uh, shrimp. Um, and that's one of the real popular items over there. Yeah, we tend. Okay. Sam, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello? Hello? Yes, where are you calling from? Hi. Hi. I'm calling from Yulilani. Okay. Now on Oahu. And your question? Yes. Uh huh. Um, I'm the same fish of Pakapaka. Yes. Is there any way you can substitute it with different kind of fish? Uh, substitute, yeah, you can substitute any type of substitute fish. Substitute it with a different kind? Yes, you can substitute it with any kind of fish. It's up to you okay. what you want to put. Like uh, minpachi or uh, onaga. You can use a bass, any, any, any kind any of fish. Kind. Mahi. Any, anything with Mahi. a nice fillet. Moi. Yeah, boy. Boy is excellent, but generally, yeah. uh, like during Morning New time. Year's time, you want to use the red fish, yeah. right? Steam the red fish. Paka paka, onaga, uh, ehu. Yeah, right. Does that answer okay. the question? Thanks a lot. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. What do you have another question? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> since I'm on the waffle. Uh huh. Uh, is there any place here that I can go to, or is it only you folks are the big island? Is there any other location here where I can find kind of like the same specialties or food that the folks have? You have to come to Hilo. You know, the Merry Monarch is coming soon. Maybe uh, it's next week, Chuck. Join the Merry <laughs> Monarch and uh, go to our restaurant. I'm sorry I can't mention the name of the restaurant, but once you get here, you'll know where it is. Uh, where is it exactly on Hilo? I beg your pardon? <laughs> the address? The address. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, well, uh, you have to go to the, <laughs> <laughs> you you have have go to the first shopping, shopping center, center here. Here. Grill. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Here's the Here's the Here's the uh, did you answer the question, uh, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got that. Okay. Uh, do you have another question from Mililani? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thanks well, for thank calling. you for calling uh, from Mililani. And do we have another caller? We do not. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm uh, from Hilo. Okay, and your question? Uh, I wanted to know what time does Encore open in the morning? Open oh. at 7. Seven? Eight yeah. The seven. restaurant opens at seven in the morning and we close at nine at night, seven days a week. Okay, okay. I just wanted to say too, um, you're doing a very good job, Dr. Fuji. Thank you very hey, much. Give Dr. Fuji a hand. I appreciate and the what's call. Up, and, uh, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> of course, uh, this would not be possible without people like Sam Araki here and his chefs, Evan Canberra and Matt Miguel. So. Um, thank you very much for calling in from Hilo and for your kind words. Uh, do we have another caller? No callers. So we have a question. We have two questions. Great. Uh, from the classroom in the back, just uh, you, you go first. Yes. Hi. Do you serve desserts there? Yes, we yes. do. Desserts. We we desserts. serve desserts. 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 <laughs> what kind of dessert do you have? No calories. No calories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a variety oh. of desserts. We have um, bread pudding, uh, bread pudding, pudding malasadas, blueberry cream cheese, blueberry, strawberry blueberry cream, cheese, cream cheese, strawberry cream, 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 cream horns, 
Yeah. What else That's do you the have? kind of question. Long johns, like. <laughs> <laughs> cakes, carrot cakes, chocolate cakes, pineapple cakes. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of variety. A lot, a a lot of variety. Wide variety. Little something different almost every day. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for the question in the classroom, and we have. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air. I guess we're having some technical difficulties here. <coughs> well, I guess we lost the caller. So uh, I think we have another question from the back of the classroom. Yes, we do. Thank you. Go ahead. What are some of the other Japanese dishes that you serve? Evan, what we have, are some um, of the other dishes? We have donburis, oyakuron, katsuron. What's um, a donburi? Donburi is served over a bed of rice. We have the katsuron, we, we have choice of pork or chicken. The oyakudon, that one has chicken, bamboo shoots, onions, mushrooms and green onions, all cooked in a shoyu based sauce. We have um, chicken sukiyaki, nabiyaki udon, different types of noodles. Uh, Evan, we've got another caller, so <laughs> we're going to take the <laughs> next <laughs> caller. Uh, <laughs> so let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello? Hi, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Volcano. Okay, Volcano. Honest. And your question? I was talking about the um, steamed fish. Okay. Um, when you guys... Uh, Put the sauce on it in the pan. You steam it in the pan. Okay. How do you uh, how do you steam the fish, uh, mm -hmm. Evan? Yeah, um, we pan it out, and we just we have a. It's actually like we have a pressurized steamer at the restaurant. So, but any steamer will do. Does that um, answer the question? What What you can do at home yeah, is you can um, have a nice well big uh, frying pan. Put some water on the bottom. Put a little plate or something. On underneath and then just uh, put a plate with the fish on top and just cover it. It's like a, a, a little, build yourself your own little steamer. Yeah. Um, I got a, I got a, like a bamboo steamer, but I was just wondering um, if you can just put that right on the, on the steamer. I'll put it in a plate. If you got it in the plate, then, you know, you don't really get the steam going through the, through the fish yet. I would, I would put like tea, tea leaf leaves maybe on yours. You put tea leaf. Bamboo steamer yeah. first. Because you don't want to lose sorry, the fish. That again? Put a piece of tea leaf down, then put your fish on top of the tea leaf. On top of the tea leaf in your steamer. Okay, yeah, that was going to be my next question because when I saw you serve it, um, it was um, on a leaf, uh, tea leaf, yeah. Yeah. So you can just steam it um, on the tea leaf, on the tea leaf. Y you can do it on the tea leaf. You can also just same thing. You can serve it right off of that same tea leaf. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, thank well, you. thank you for calling from Volcano, and I hope we have another caller. Uh, do we have another caller? No callers. My goodness, this is going to be a tough night tonight. Uh, again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring Sam Araki and uh, his chefs, uh, Evan Cambra and Matt Miguel. And they prepared for us several dishes. Uh, maybe, uh, did we go over, uh, why don't we go to the other side of the uh, table and pan in from the other side and uh, go over some of the dishes uh, that were prepared later on in the classroom. Can we get the overhead camera going or is the overhead camera uh, not working? I don't see it moving so maybe uh, we're having all kinds of problems tonight. Okay, uh, Sam, you know, uh, there we go. What is that now, <laughs> Sam? That looks like Matt. Matt, 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 Matt prepared that. Okay, Matt. What is that? Okay, that's the Nitsuki Ahi Belly. And the okay. uh, marinade for that or the sauce for that is uh, a cup of shoyu, a cup of sugar, one and a half cups of water, and a tablespoon of mirin, and okay. uh, ginger slices. Okay, why don't we pan over to the next dish? while we wait some for some phone calls. There we go. Oh, that looks good. I can't wait to dig into that dish. <laughs> what is that one, Matt? Okay, that's the uh, steamed opaka paka with uh, minced garlic, ginger, and green onion, and um, 
uh, peanut oil. So over, actually, over fish. you could use the same recipe and get one of those great big red fish and, and do the same thing uh, and, and uh, get the hot peanut oil and, and uh, pour it right over the steamed fish, right? Right. Okay, and why don't we pan over to the next dish while we're waiting for some phone calls. Okay, there we go. And what is that one? That's our uh, saibin combo, garnished with uh, Chinese cabbage and mustard cabbage with uh, eggs, uh, some kamabuku and char siu, and your choice of meat. And tonight's choice is uh, yakitori chicken with a scoop of mac salad and pickled daikon. Okay, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yes, um, I called earlier. Okay. I'm calling from Volcano again. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm having some trouble with the audio over here. Uh, yeah, and we had um, problems. Did, go ahead. Did, did he say on that um, ahi belly that uh -huh. it was a half a cup of water or one and a half cup of water? Okay. Uh, it was one and a half cup of water. Cups, one and a half cups of water. <laughs> one and a half cups of water. Oh, okay, yeah, I got it. Got it? Thank you again. Okay, well, thank Bye -bye. you for calling from Volcano again. And uh, we have another question from the back of the classroom. Go ahead. Tomorrow is Good Friday. What is um, on the menu? We are going to have the Opaka Paka at Encore. And Hopefully we have the ahi belly at Koyo Grill. Grill. So you will have a lot of fish dishes for uh, Good Friday. Try mm -hmm. Right now, f fish is kind of scarce. <laughs> the, <laughs> the weather has been changing so much. So, okay. But Thank you. But they will have fish for you, so please go over there and mm -hmm. have a nice fish dinner. Okay, we have another question from the back. Uh, go ahead. Um, did you guys uh, ever cook? Okay, go ahead. Did you guys ever cook your fried rice with kimchi in it? Just like mix it up in it? Yeah, yeah I think we did we that one time. It. We tried it. Yeah, we tried it. We a tried it a couple of times. times. It was really popular. Yeah. You liked it with kimchi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question was, do they ever prepare fried rice with kimchi mixed in it? And uh, they said they did, and uh, it's very tasty. And do we have another caller or do we have any question from the class? I'm going to make all the students in the classroom <laughs> ask a question before they can eat tonight. So, <laughs> can we get our camera? Nah. Okay. Uh, again, we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mookini Library. And this evening we're featuring uh, Kuhio Grill. I might also mention that. Uh, Next Thursday, uh, unfortunately, I'll, I'll be in Honolulu, so we're going to have a substitution. Uh, we have a caller, so let's take the <laughs> caller, and then I'll get back to that. <laughs> we'll take the caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, where are you calling from? Hi, yeah, I'm calling from uh, Oahu. Okay, I and your question. I just tuned in. I wanted to know what restaurant do they um, are, are you guys featuring tonight? Okay, you know I'm not supposed to say, but since you called in, I have no you know control over people calling in, and uh, since we are an educational institution, and they ask a question, we're going to have to answer it. So, Sam, where is your restaurants? Uh, we're free, uh, tonight. Uh, we are representing two restaurants actually, Kuhio Grill at the Prince Kuhio Shopping Center, and then we just, Kuhio Grill's uh, sister restaurant, which is called Encore by Kuhio Grill. We just opened that up about a month ago, which is across the uh, street in the Puanico Town Center. So when you come to the Big okay, Island, thank you. come visit us. Okay, thank well, you. thank you for calling from Oahu. And uh, do we have another caller? No caller, okay. <laughs> uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, I will be on Oahu next uh, Thursday, so we are going to have a substitution. Actually, we were supposed to have the, uh, uh, the Okinawa uh, group come on, but uh, unfortunately, uh, they were unable to come. So we have one of our favorite uh, personalities. Uh, again, we're going to have Arnold Miyasaki come on. Uh, he was so gracious to uh, 
uh, come on and also his wife Domi will uh, join uh, Arnold and they will prepare some more uh, of these Bolivian dishes I believe so I hope that you'll join us uh, next Thursday evening uh, although I won't be here Arnold will have a, a real tough time because he's not only going to have to host the program but he's also going to do some cooking with uh, Domi Tilla and I really appreciate them uh, coming and uh, uh, doing this for us on sh such uh, short notice and he has a lot of good stories uh, from uh, Bolivia and uh, some very interesting cooking and uh, I know the uh, students were very happy with the dishes that uh, Arnold and Domi prepared for us uh, last Thursday so I mean about a couple I think about two or three uh, Thursdays ago but anyway, so next Thursday uh, we'll be on again, but we will have a substitution. We'll have Arnold Miyazaki and his wife Domi uh, preparing some dishes for us. And uh, while we wait for some phone calls, we have another four minutes to go. Sam, uh, maybe I can ask you another question about taro. You know, you have wetland taro. Can uh, wetland taro, which is grown in uh, water, uh, can can wetland varieties also be grown dry land? Uh, yes, yes, you can. You can grow the wetland varieties dry land, but you need to keep it moist um, uh -huh. um, because the the flavoring will will change. Um, if any of you who uh, like to eat uh, taro, uh, you can probably taste the difference between. Um, uh, say a lehua that's grown wetland versus a lehua that's grown dry land. Um, the wetland uh, for uh, growing uh, in the wetland um, makes it a little bit, to me it makes it a little bit sweeter. Um, the wet in, in dry land conditions, um, unless you keep it moist all the time, uh, the, it tends to be an earthier taste to the taro, so therefore it, it alters the taste of your uh, um, poi, if you like to eat poi. Um, but as long as you keep it nice and moist, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, um, Sam, you know, uh, also uh, w you grow lotus root, uh, and uh, that's another very unique crop. Uh, how do we, again, grow the, the lotus root? Lotus root requires a lot of running water. Um, it, it's, it's grown in the mud anywhere from six inches of mud minimum on, uh, on up. And you have the little shoots that you stick into the ground in the mud. And it, you, it takes about eight to 10 months to grow. Um, and when it matures, the, uh, the leaves will all dry up and that'll tell you that it's ready to be harvested. The uh, lotus plant uh, produces the leaves that come up out of the water about anywhere from three to five feet high and they also produce a nice big giant green leaf, the diameter anywhere from about a foot to 18 inches, depending on the variety. Um, and then you have a lot of different types of flowers that will come out. The one that's edible will produce a nice beautiful white flower with uh, a little uh, tinge of yellow on the, on the petals and has a nice fragrance to it. Unfortunately, those flowers are gonna last about a day or two uh, there are also some um, ornamental varieties of lotus roots that are, are really catching on in the uh, uh, water, um, water gardening societies. Um, some of those tubers are small and they're not quite as edible as the bigger uh, variety that we normally see in the supermarkets. Um, but they're all the same family. Okay, Sam, yeah. you know, we've uh, completely run out of time. I'd like to thank you, Sam, and uh, Matt and uh, Evan for joining us this evening and sharing uh, all the dishes with us and uh, uh, we hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening when we have Arnold Miyazaki joining us and also Dom his wife Domi and we'll do some Bolivian cooking so I hope you'll join us next Thursday evening. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching and have a good evening. <laughs>